Hi, I'm Jim Taylor with Appalachian Mountain Guides, and today we're going to be talking about the Munter Hitch. And the Munter Hitch is commonly used by climbing guides for both belaying purposes and personal self-rescue, and it's also found in the vertical rescue world, heavy technical rope rescue. It can be used to belay. It can also be used for a load-releasing hitch for tying off Stokes litters and many other different applications. One of the first things you want to do when tying your Munter Hitch is locate the loaded end, the end that's going to be tied into the litter or into the climber. We're then going to take the rope, clip it into the carabiner, and we're actually going to tie this hitch directly on the carabiner itself. Here is my load bearing strand going down to my climber below, my brake strand over here on the left hand side. With the brake strand I'm going to create a loop. And If you look closely you'll notice that the brake is behind the load, meaning that the strand coming behind is what's going to my loose pile of rope, my leftover. I'm then going to take this loop and simply clip it in to the carabiner, making sure to lock the carabiner itself, and I now have a good munter hitch. It works for both taking in rope. When you want to lower somebody, the knot will nearly rock over, and you can lower somebody as well. One of the key things with the munter hitch is making sure that you use an HMS carabiner, also commonly known as a parabiner. The wide head was specifically built for the Munter hitch, and if you try to use the Munter hitch on a much smaller carabiner, you'll find that it won't rotate over or rock back and forth or feed smoothly. Yet another positive attribute of the Munter hitch is that it can be easily tied off while it's under load. Typically, most people will use a mule knot to tie off their Munter hitch, and it's very similar to the Munter hitch itself in that we're going to make a loop with the brake strand behind the load come around the load bearing strand and feed a bite through the loop that we created. And this will give us the mule knot, cinches off our munter hitch, and typically we want to back this up with yet another knot, a simple overhand just for safety's sake. And this is commonly referred to as a safety knot. Now we're in a hands-free position. We can have somebody hanging over a cliff edge. Feel free to go and work on other things. The other nice attribute to this is the fact that even under a load, in a fairly heavy load, it can be easily released just by untying the overhand, working the mule knot down until our loop is fairly small, then I'm going to take both hands, apply them to the brake strand, and snap it back into place into the braking position. Now we're going to demonstrate how to use the munter hitch to lower either a climber or a rescuer down over the edge of a cliff. One of the key things we want to do when using the munter hitch to lower somebody is to back it up, preferably with an auto block backup. The easiest way to do that is to take a prusik loop, clip a carabiner into your harness, into the belay loop, then put your auto block on. And this can give you a hands-free backup should anything happen to you while lowering somebody. Make sure that it's set, everything looks good and is working well. And now we're ready to lower our climber or rescuer over the edge of the cliff. Okay, so go ahead and move on back to the edge, Kate, and go ahead and begin to put your full weight onto the system. We're going to lower you nicely over the edge. There you go. And one of the nice things about the auto block is if you were to be incapacitated in any way and let go of the braking strand, it automatically binds, giving you a hands-off brake that's easily releasable when you want to continue lowering your climber down 